Hello, I'm Eric Menzel, director of the Medieval Women's Choir. In 2006, the choir presented a concert titled L'Histoire d'Is, or The Story of Is. Through music and poetry, the program told the enduring Breton legend of the lost city of Is. We'd like to share that story and that music with you now. As our narrative opens, we meet Gralon the Great, King of Kernev, a region on the west coast of Brittany, also known as Cornouaille. He is an adventurer, known for carrying out coastal raids in the frigid north. Finally, tired and homesick, his men rebel and sail for home, leaving Gralon alone. That night, he is visited by Malgven, a northern queen and, in some accounts, a sorceress. She conspires with Gralon to murder her aging husband and return to Kernev together. Gralon and Malkven spend a year at sea, at the end of which she gives birth to their daughter, Dahut. But the king's delight is turned to grief when Malkven dies in childbirth, and he retreats to his castle, where his love for his daughter is his only consolation. Dahut, a child of the sea, is so attached to it that she spends all her time on its shores, and when she grows older, she asks her father to build her a city by the sea. The king agrees, and Caris, the city of Is, is raised behind a formidable dike with a set of monumental gates, the only key to which Gralon wears around his neck night and day. The splendor of the new city attracts well-heeled visitors from far and wide, but the pleasures on offer there quickly descend into decadence and depravity, with Dahut and her latest lover never far from the center of it all. One night, she is captivated by a handsome stranger who asks her to prove her devotion by bringing him the key her father always wears. Accounts differ on what happens next. Perhaps the stranger is actually the devil in disguise, or the key is misused in drunken folly. But the result is always the same. The gates are opened, the city is overwhelmed by the sea, and all perish except Gralon himself. Our story opens with a song about that frigid north, where King Gralon may have found himself, the Isle of Ulst in the Outer Hebrides. In Cornouaille lived King Gralon, a sailor triumphant and bold. His fleet was valiant in battle and brought him trophies and gold. It was winter in that distant north, and his sailors did curse and moan, and they turned their ships toward Brittany and left King Gralon alone. And Gralon wept, and Gralon moaned, What will become of me? 
Betrayed by his men, he stood bereft and looked out on the frozen sea. But what is this shining light I see? And what is this presence I know? A woman with hair as bright as the sun, clothed all in a starry glow. I am Malgven, queen of the north. She shook her tresses red. My husband is old and rusted his sword, so let us slay him dead. And we will murder him swift and clean, and to Cornwall we'll go. And I'll be your wife, and I'll bear your child, for your courage and strength, I know. And then there arose a violent storm that shattered many a fleet. But Malgven and Gralon sailed the sea, and their passion was fierce and sweet. For a year they sailed that cold, dark sea, and their passion was sweet and wild. And then Queen Malgven took to her bed and gave birth to a beautiful child. They called her Dahut, and she was fair with shimmering curls of gold. But alas, Queen Malgven did not survive, and her body grew stiff and cold. And Grelon wept, and Grelon moaned. Of his grief, he was never free. But Dahut grew strong and lovely, and she played by the shore of the sea. And Grelon adored his daughter fair, for she was his only treasure. And she went to him and said one day, Would you do something for my pleasure? Would you build me a city, strong and fine, a city beside the sea? And Gralon kissed his daughter's hair, saying, Dahut, this shall be. So he sent out workers, a thousand men, and they built it, solid as rock. And they called it Is, and they made a dike with a gate of bronze and a lock. And the only key that would open that door they placed in Gralon's hand. And Dahut sat nightly, combing her hair, and she sang on the shimmering sand.
Then sailors and travelers flocked to the city. They came from the west and the east, and every night there were jousts and games and a grand and sumptuous feast. And the dancers danced, and the singers sang, and the wine flowed abundant and strong, and the music grew wilder and wilder, and the guests drank all night long. Unto his guests, King Gralon said, My merry friends, the day is sped. I wish to take me to my bed. Drink on, drink on, till morning light. In feast and dalliance, waste the night. For all that will, the board is dight.
To Gralon's daughter, bright of glee, her lover whispered tenderly, Bethink thee, sweet Dahut, the key. I'll win the key from my father's side that bolts the sluice and bars the tide, for to work thy will is thy lady's pride. Who so that ancient king had seen asleep in his bed of the golden sheen, dumb-stricken awe for all had been. To see him laid in his robe of grain, his hair like snow on his white shoulder bane, and round his neck the golden chain. Whoso had watched that night, I weeped, had seen a maiden softly fleet in at the door on naked feet. To the old king's side she'd stolen free and kneeled her down upon her knee and lightly had taken both chain and key. He sleepeth still, he sleepeth sound, when hark, a cry from the lower ground, the sluice is opened, Caris is drowned. Awake, Sir King, the gates on spar. Rise up and ride both fast and far. The sea flows over bolt and bar. Now doomed forevermore they be, that all for wine and harlotry, the sluice unbarred that held the sea.
Falcon's bloody reply. We go to the dark, warm, and cool. Make levies, rock, 